Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you major news developments from around the world. Our headlines: Three indigenous people killed as massacres continue in the Philippines. Military forces set fire to a village in Myanmar's Magwe region. Biden put in summit ends in Geneva without concrete agreements. And in our video section, we take a look at Pedro Castillo's electoral win in Peru as Keiko Fujimori refuses to concede the election. In our first story, three people from the indigenous Lumad Manobo tribe were killed by the Philippines military on June 15th. Rights group Karapatan stated on Thursday that the forces opened fire on six farmers in Surigao del Sur. Among those killed was a 12-year-old child. The 3rd Special Forces Battalion reportedly then brought the bodies to the military headquarters. Here they were red tagged as members of the bad New People's Army. The SOS network and the victims' families stated that the bodies had been mutilated. The military later announced on Thursday that it had killed communist rebels during a firefight. This is the 25th such massacre documented by Karapatan under the administration of President Rodrigo Duterte. Meanwhile, Duterte has also stated that he will not cooperate with an ICC probe into the country's drug war killings. Outgoing Chief Prosecutor Fatou Ben Soda has requested authorization for a formal inquiry in a statement made public this week. She had stated that there is reasonable basis to believe that the crimes against humanity were committed between July 2016 and March 2019. As per government data, Filipino forces killed 6,117 alleged drug dealers between 2016 and April of this year. However, extrajudicial killings by armed forces, militias and vigilantes have pushed the death toll much higher. The Philippines Commission on Human Rights stated in 2018 that an estimated 27,000 people had died in drug war killings. Security forces often claim that an alleged suspect was killed for resisting arrest or drawing a weapon. However, an interdepartmental report showed over 5,000 case, of over 5,000 cases showed that no verification on these supposed weapons was ever conducted. Human rights groups have also found that Philippines police often planted drugs or weapons to cover up extrajudicial killings. In our next story, Myanmar's military forces reportedly set fire to a village in the Magwe region on June 15th. The residents of the Kin Ma village told Reuters that a fire was set after a confrontation between the forces and opponents of the junta. At least two elderly people were killed and around 200 homes were destroyed. The state-run MRTV later announced that 40 terrorists had started a fire. As per the latest reports, people from Kin Ma are still hiding in the nearby forests. Following the coup on February 1st, ethnic groups and civilian defense forces have launched an armed resistance against the junta. Clashes have been reported in several states including Kain, Chin and Shan along with the Bago region. Groups in the Kaya and Shan state claim to have killed 120 junta forces in May. Meanwhile, the military has deployed indiscriminate air and land attacks. These have displaced around 336,000 people as of June 15th. The UN Special Aperture Tom Andrews also warned of mass deaths in the Kaya state last week. Around 100,000 people were at risk of starvation, disease and exposure after fleeing their villages. The UN has received reports of military blockades stopping aid and junta forces laying landmines on public roads. Several villages have also been raided and electricity has been cut off in the Sagyang region. The Assistance Association for Political Prisoners has stated that at least 865 civilians have been killed since the coup. Among them are around 75 children. Over 4,900 people are currently in detention and 182 have been sentenced. We now move on to a summit between US President Joe Biden and his Russian counterpart Vladimir Putin in Geneva on June 16th. This was the first meeting between the leaders of the two countries since 2018. They have now agreed to return their ambassadors to their post to resume diplomatic duties. Russia had withdrawn its ambassador in March after Biden called Putin a killer. Both had now also agreed to establish a strategic dialogue on arms control and risk reduction. This includes possible changes to the recently extended START treaty. The agreement places limits on deployed nuclear warheads on land and submarine-based missiles. However, no concrete measures have been presented as of yet. President Putin has also dismissed US allegations of Russian cyber attacks and election interference. Regarding right-wing opposition figure Alexei Navalny, Putin stated that he has broken the law. Biden later stated that the consequences would be devastating if Navalny were to die in prison. The US has imposed sanctions on Russia relating to his case as well as the 2014 annexation of Crimea. Putin also dismissed concerns on the increased presence of troops along the Ukrainian border. Wednesday's meeting followed shortly after the NATO and G7 summits. President Putin has continued to pitch for an aggressive stance against Russia and China. Speaking at a solo press conference on Wednesday, he raised doubts about China's commitment to the inquiry into COVID-19 origins. China has repeatedly warned against politicizing the issue and has denounced the so-called lab leak theory. And for our final story, we take a look at the latest on Peru's presidential elections. With all, all votes counted, left-wing candidate Pedro Castillo has won with 50.12% of the votes. Far-right candidate Keiko Fujimori has secured 48.87%. However, she has refused to concede the election and has demanded the annulment or review of a total of 500,000 votes. The appeals process is expected to take weeks despite no proper evidence of fraud or irregularities. Meanwhile, Castillo has continued to receive messages of support from other progressive leaders in the region. Here is a video feature on the current situation in Peru.
that's all we have time for today we'll be back tomorrow with more news from around the world until then keep watching people's dispatch